welcome to this quote unquote workshop. It's not really going to be a workshop because I wanted it to be a bit more interactive, to be honest. And we've only got an hour and typically it can take up to 45 minutes to an hour to get set up and, and doing things with some tools. Um, maybe not so much with LDK, but in, in general. So just, just for my benefit, um, show of hands, who's like a developer in the, in the audience. So we've got one dev. Um, just interested in like the tools and technologies that devs are going to use and, and they're just interested to learn about that. Is that everyone? Nice. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, my name's Connor. I work at an organization called Spiral. Um, some of you may, may have heard, heard about Spiral. So Spiral do a couple of things. A, we're, we're an organization that's focused on helping bring about mass adoption for Bitcoin and, and making it the you know the native currency for the internet like our thing is like making bitcoin more than an investment and we do that in a number of different ways one of those ways is our grant program so we fund over i think at this point over two dozen designers and developers all working on free open source bitcoin projects so some of the stuff you can see here is like btc pay server got someone in the crowd wearing a, a btc pay server shirt um uh, infrastructure projects such as like the eye of Satoshi around watchtowers and um, privacy preserving technologies such as coin swap. Um, the summer of Bitcoin projects also a, a fantastic project to help on board like the future developers and Bitcoin enthusiasts, enthusiasts at university. Um, and then we've given developer grants as well to a host of people working on Bitcoin Core itself to SDK software development kits such as BDK and LDK. Um, and then we also give designer grants out as well. So we have a whole, uh, we have a huge design community who are focused on helping to improve the UX and the, the user interfaces around Bitcoin as well. And here's a list of our alumni as well. So we've got a, got a huge list there. And uh, yeah, they all, they're, we're, they're all geographically dispersed as well. So they're around like 18, 19 different countries as well. Um, and then our, our full-time team uh, is a team of PMs and developers and creatives as well. We've got a creative on our team. So if you're, if you're following our Twitter account, you would have seen that it's like one of the more, I guess, unique brands in the space for sure. But our full-time team are also focused on um, helping to improve Bitcoin's adoption um, through building something called the LDK. And the LDK helps developers um, integrate Lightning into any Bitcoin wallet or any Bitcoin application um, without having to like understand a lot of the protocol level stuff. So yeah, we're, we're just an organization focused on improving the Bitcoin ecosystem in areas of privacy, um, scalability, user experience and security. Hiya. Um, so that's a bit about Spiral. Um, and I'm, I'm a PM there, so I'm, I'm currently, I'm a PM slash like developer advocate slash just do whatever's necessary. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm currently managing our grant program as well. So I'm always on the lookout like for new talent and, and people who, who wanna work on Bitcoin. Um, what else was I gonna say? I also, I'm hosting this, uh, where is it? It's this one, let me close this. I'm also hosting this uh, show called Bitcoin Developers on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, I think one or two people in this room have been on the show, but it's basically like an hour long, hour and a half long st live stream where we go through some of these tools and SDKs and, and show people how they can can use them to integrate into into their wallet and into their different type of applications. So you can head over to Twitch if you're someone who likes to watch live streams on Twitch. Um, and we're also on YouTube. We only have 369 subscribers, so I'd appreciate if everyone got out their wallet and subscribed to the YouTube channel so we can, uh, we can get these numbers up. It's pretty much the only number I care about this year, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Because yeah, when you type in how to do something with Bitcoin at the minute, I wanna see thousands of videos on YouTube from all over the place. So like this is a start and this is an effort towards that. So 
feel free to uh, subscribe there and share all that good stuff. Oh yeah, and I did I did want to throw this in as well, just for some laughs and giggles. Like I did used to play professional football as well. So this is me when I was I think 18, playing for Aberdeen in Scotland. Um, I used to also play for West Ham United as well. Um, and I'm also on the board at Royal Bedford, um, which is a football team that Peter McCormack um, have just purchased. So I'm over there trying to help with like the Bitcoin integration and merge the two worlds of football and Bitcoin together. So that's that's a fun project. Um, but we're not here to talk about football really. We're here to like <laughs> learn about the LDK and and what that's all about. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking at my notes because uh, I'm a forgetful kind of person. What is a uh, LDK? Hey, who who in here has heard of LDK? Okay, so about let's say eighty five percent. Like what? Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna ask you. <laughs> um, uh, who 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 wants to just maybe like describe what they think L LDK is? Maybe you wanna? Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. He's described it pretty much perfectly. So, um, I guess LDK stands for Lightning Dev Kit, and it and it is a Lightning implementation in its own right. Um, so it's a it's a Lightning implementation as an SDK essentially. So um, it was developed, well, it was started by Matt Corallo, I think, in twenty eighteen. Um, it was formerly called uh, Rust Lightning, and it basically like exposes all of these high level APIs that you can integrate into any Bitcoin application um, without having to worry about a lot of the low level protocol stuff that comes with um, uh, creating and maintaining a node implementation or a lightning implementation. Um, what else have I got here? So we've got that. Uh, so yeah, I guess some more stuff around, around a little bit more about LDK is like this focus on customizability. Um, so we basically provide APIs for you to do a host of different stuff. So whether it be like sourcing chain data and interacting with the blockchain itself. So whether you're running a full node and you want to interact with it over RPC or whether you want to um, use the Electron protocol or whether you want to use Bit157 compact block filters or if you just want to use a simple HTTP REST sort of interface and, um, and communicate using Explorer or Blockstream or something of that, na of that nature. It's all kind of plug and play. Um, you can also choose your custom storage mechanisms. So um, opposed to on-chain stuff, like Lightning has a lot of stuff around backing up channel state and um, you know uh, reinforcement of on-chain stuff and all of this stuff can be like uh, a bit difficult to manage so we provide like different apis for you to be able to back up all of that stuff so whether it be to the local file system or to a, a cloud provider like google drive or or icloud or something that, of that nature it's all just kind of plug and play and then we have this ability for you to be able to manage like a single wallet or like a unified wallet. So you can have the same, you know, BIP39 seed that is used to generate your um, BIP32 derivation path. You can use the, the seed that was used for that as the seed for your LDK node to sign transactions as well. Um, so, there's that, and then there's this there's this whole thing around uh, language bindings as well. So uh, the core library is actually written in Rust. Let me head over to to GitHub quickly. Um, I've got a million and one tabs open here, but this is the LDK GitHub, um, and as you can see, there's there's twelve repositories. So LDK represents like a suite of of tools and and technologies that you can kind of choose how you want to use. Um, one of the things that we're really focused on is this concept of language binding. So now the current um, it main implementation is written in Rust. Just to go off a little tangent on Rust, I guess we chose Rust for its like um, it's it's an it's an up and coming emerging language, but it's still 
gives you kind of, I guess, fine grain control over like performance and memory and this kind of stuff. And it's um, lightweight, so you can run it in all types of em environments like embedded devices, mobile phones, um, enterprise beefy servers, like whatever it might be. So it gives you a lot of the same kind of um, security, I guess, guarantees that you'd get in a low level language like C++. Um, so the core library is written in Rust, but we actually expose um, the APIs in other languages as well. So you can, if you're a Java developer, we're currently supporting Java. Um, so I guess more enterprise-y type of environments. Um, we also support Kotlin as well. So if you are going to speak to this a, a little bit later in the talk, um, if you're writing an Android application, um, Swift as well, if you're writing an iOS app, as well and and um we are going to have and there is also a, a library written in react native which isn't officially supported by our team but the blue wallet team are currently using it as well um so we do have this focus on language binding so you don't have to learn rush you don't have to go through the steep learning curve of learning rust but you can pick your preferred language and develop in that as well um so we have a a real focus on that and it's it's, it's really not easy to to do to create these language bindings that are syntactically the, the 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 same and have the same experience that you'd want from those native languages it can be quite difficult and we still do have quite a way to go with that but um the goal is by doing that you improve the developer experience tenfold um while still getting the security guarantees and stuff that that rust provides um, so if you're interested, like yeah, head over to the GitHub and kind of peruse peruse through that. Um, what else have we got going on? Um, okay, so yeah, I guess we've spoken a little bit about the advantages. Um, yeah, there's a lot of I guess maintenance around running your own your your own implement implementation as well. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so like who who's you might you might be asking who's using LDK. And I, and I do kind of want to make this a little bit interactive as well. So like, feel free to like throw questions at me like as we go along, as opposed to kind of waiting till the end. Um, so who's using LDK? So we've got, here we go, over here, I think. So we've got, um, why is that so big? We've got the Blue Wallet team that are using LDK. And although it's not, um, it's not quite in production yet, I, I think you can access it via like a, a Easter egg type of flag type of thing. Um, so they're, they're using it. Okay, so Ray says tap multiple times on the Lightning Wallet and you'll, and you'll get it. Um, and I think LDK, like the sweet spot for LDK really is like non-custodial mobile environments where there are like constraints around um, storage and, and memory and these kind of trade-offs, I think. LDK shines in this kind of environment because it can run at the application layer. So we definitely find, um, we definitely are trying to optimize for that kind of use case and that kind of environment. Um, but we're also seeing it being used in like larger organizations such as Cash App. So Cash App also shipped with Lightning. Um, it's been a, it's been a while now. I think this year or, may, or maybe late last year. I can't quite remember. Um, but they allow you to do lightning withdrawals and they're using LDK, um, our, Java, our Java bindings. And uh, also seeing it being used in a project called uh, Sensei, which is like a, a, node, a node implementation, um, which allows you to like run multiple nodes um, and offload some of the stuff around like network graphs um or, or or syncing network graphs and and root scoring all of these uh different kind of like process intensive um things can be offloaded and um balanced in different ways so ldk gives a bit of flexibility around that as well um what else did i want to go through so that's that's who's using ldk uh what else do we have here yeah, and then there's just a, like a, I've written a blog post as well that just kind of talks to like a bit about the history of LDK, um, uh, who's supporting it, what advantages there are for developers, um, and a bit around our like priorities and stuff coming up. So some of our priorities include like offline receive and integrating Bolt 12 and Taproot and continuing our work on, on language bindings as well. 
Um, It's LSP, yeah. Yeah, so the question was, do, do we know what's holding up Blue Wallet going into production? And from my understanding, it, it's just more around a lot of like the infrastructure and um, and like, like Roy just mentioned, like LSP. So if anyone doesn't know what LSP is, Lightning Service Provider, which I guess is a, it's now being specced out and is a, a technology that's going to enable easier onboarding for, for end users because they won't have to manage channels and, and uh, things of that nature. Uh, right I, it is separate. Uh, from my understanding, no, it's going to remain separate. I do. I am an advocate of them being merged. To be honest with you, um, that's uh, probably a conversation for tomorrow around like Bitcoin UX challenges. Like, I, I prefer like a unified QR. Well, I guess it depends on your use case, right? But like for most end users, like this difference between Bitcoin and Lightning, two tabs, and I don't know. I I think my experience in El Salvador suggests that that's a horrible experience, but. I don't know. Maybe there just needs to be more education around around the two, and you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so there's the blog post. Uh, what did I want to? So I'll, I'll close some of these quickly. Um, okay. So I'll, else I wanted to do. Okay. So let's visualize a little bit of this because it can be a bit difficult to to actually know what we're talking about with this. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of clear. So here's, like, here's a kind of diagram of like the core of LDK. So I guess in the middle, you've got like the LDK state machine, low level lightning protocol stuff. And then the dotted lines go out to what I guess we describe as components or modules that you as a developer decide how you want to implement. So we don't um, provide a networking stack by default, for example. So you can, well, that's a lot. We, we provide an implementation in Rust, but you can choose your own networking stack if you want to. Um, I'll talk about events in a second. And then you can also define your own chain interaction. So I spoke a, li I spoke a bit to that earlier but stuff around monitoring the blockchain and broadcasting transactions um you define how you do that um hopefully a lot of that will be done by the bdk um which i spoke about about i don't know half an hour ago just filled in for Fode because he was unable to make it but i spoke a bit to bdk and hopefully a lot of the chain interactions happen with bdk and then we have this kind of w wallet module so it the LDK is very much bring your own wallet. So it's unlike, I guess it's unlike Core, Core Lightning and LND, which come uh, and async as well, is they come, or Eclair come embedded with their own wallets. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so some, some of the other implementations come like with wallets already integrated into them. Um, LDK doesn't do that. Um, it kind of says like bring your own wallet. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to so just for the camera, so LDK supports compact block filters, neutrino, quote unquote neutrino. As the On the LDK side, but yeah. The mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anton. Um, so there's that, and then there's uh, pers persistence as well. So um, 
LDK will provide you like a set of events, um, callbacks every time something important happens. So whether it be when you open a channel or when you um, receive a transaction or whether you receive like an inbound request to open a channel. Um, all of these things come with data associated with them and you can back that up in, in various different ways. So um, LDK basically emits events that users can act upon and I'll go into a bit more detail about that in a second. Um, so that's like the high level kind of architecture of how LDK functions. Go on. Yeah, okay. Do you say again? Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, so Anton mentioned as well about uh, the the keys management or the keys interface and, and that being abstracted away so you can provide your own, I guess, uh, you know, random source of entropy or you might want to use, uh, you might want to do it in a unified way with BDK and use the entropy associated with setting up keys and stuff in BDK as well. So yeah, that's a good point and probably something we should add to the diagram as well. Um, what else have we got going on? Architecture. And just just a little d little detour as well. Um, if you're like new and you new to Bitcoin development and and, and the BDK and the LDK, um, you're probably gonna want some help with like UX and UI stuff as well. So like just to plug the Bitcoin design community as well. There's a whole host of like different um, tools and uh, not tools uh, reference designs that you can kind of look at and play around with and, and look at some of the trade-offs with regards to different use cases, essentially. So just wanted to plug that a little bit as well. Um, and then wanted to talk a little bit about uh, developing LDK using Kotlin. So I've actually been playing, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't really have a background in Kotlin. I'm more of like a web developer, like JavaScript React type of person. But well, I've been playing around with Kotlin recently. Um, Kotlin's like a, a, a modern programming lang language and it's kind of Google's um, preferred language now, I guess, for developing on Android applications. Um, what I found with it is it to be, um, it's, 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 been, it's been, my experience has been pretty good. Um, it's, it's, it's a modern language and it's used to create, yeah, like apps on, on Android and it's has, um, very good interoperability. Um, so you can use all of the Java packages and stuff that you're used to um, in your Kotlin applications as well. Um, and uh, what else have we got? You guys did this, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, so Col Kotlin multi-platform as well is is a good option if you want a subset of the language available on, on iOS as well. So that's very cool. Um, and yeah, just like there's just stuff around the syntax being a lot more concise as well and stuff around like um, safety around no pointer exceptions as well. Stuff that tends to trip up developers quite a lot. Um, so Kotlin's a cool language. And then like Android itself as a platform, I guess. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess Android is an open source project, but from my, from my research, I might understand it's more of a situation where it's like, yes, the code is kind of open source and, and Google are the main proponents and supporters of it, but it's more like the code is open and everyone can see it, but I guess not everyone can make changes, but at the same time you can, you can you can fork Android and and um, customize it to your to your needs as well. Um, so and the other thing as well is, if you're if you're someone focused on the UI and user experience, like typically like or historically, developing Android apps has been like kind of kind of kind of difficult because you had this whole like XML setup which was like similar to HTML and didn't really allow you to like compartmentalize your UI and uh, use modern techniques that are we see in like 
uh, React or in Flutter Dart where you can use like a component-based approach. But there's this new, uh, I guess, developer library called Jetpack Compose, which seems really promising and um, leans on some of like the design patterns that you see in those in those projects as well um, to create more modular UIs, um, asynchronous uh, UIs that can be manipulated in different ways as well. Um, so I'm, I, I think that's quite a, a step in the right direction for like Kotlin and Android. And um, so one other thing before I talk about setting up on on Android, let's see here. Uh, oh. In the in, in LDK binding, you mean, or hit mm. of what is the, Roy is asking? What is the status of Flutter bindings? Um, there is no real status, to be honest. Like, I mean, at the minute, the focus is on, as you'll see, it, it can take a bit of. Um, it can take a bit of time to get up and running with LDK and the APIs are very, you do need to dive very deep to kind of understand them. So we're working on something called LDK Lite, which is like a higher level abstracted APIs. And from that, I think it'd be easier to then, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, I wanted to mention one thing before we go, I think, uh, let's see. Uh, trying to find my other diagram. Okay, here we go. Oh dear. Uh, okay. That's good. Okay, we'll go with that for now. So yeah, this is um kind of an older version of the architecture diagram. But yeah, it, the LDK is predominantly focused on three major components. So like when you start developing with LDK, you're going to primarily be focused on three areas. At least what I found is peer management, um, channel management, and then just payments and routing. I and mean, we spoke a little bit about language bindings already. Um, Peer management has a, f a few kind of like requirements. So like you have to define your own networking stack. You have to provide the entropy entropy for your keys to sign your lightning transactions. Um, and it also does this kind of periodic updates with regard to like, um, I guess, gossip sync and syncing with your channel, channel manager as well, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and then the other one is channel management. Um, so yeah, we have peer management, we have channel management, and some of the stuff you'll be focused on around there is like persisting channel state to disk, um, broadcasting like your funding transactions, um, sourcing your block data, handling events, fee estimation, that kind of stuff. Um, again, here's a list of like how you might do persistence. Um, again, locally, encrypted, remotely, um, you can source blockchain data using full, full blocks or individual transactions using Electrum as well. Um, and then here are some of the events. I'll try and go, I don't know how I'm gonna do this with holding the mic and, and kind of coding, but I'll try my best. Here are some of the events that get generated um, when you're opening a channel in an outbound fashion. So typically you'll get more or less four events, but one is around like, it's called funding generation ready. So when you um, request uh, to open a channel with a peer, LDK basically will return an output script, which then you're required to um, create a transaction from um, and then feed back into LDK to, to then broadcast to the network. Um, discard funding happens during the process of, of closing a transaction. Um, you also get like a channel closed event anytime like a peer closing a channel for, for whatever reason. Um, and then you also get um, this spendable outputs event, which notifies you of all of the, I guess, outputs that are available for spending when a channel is closed. Um, 
I won't go into inbound. I just focus on 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 outbound for now. Um, okay, so cool. So so yeah, the reason I've done that is because um there there are these mainly free components that that you're going to use in LDK, but they all have varying dependencies. So it's just a way to like think about approaching the architecture of your project as well. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so um, I guess at this point we could kind of dive into like a little bit of code. And what I, what I'm going to try and do is like I'm currently currently writing a sample app written in Kotlin for Android. So we'll try and like map some of these. Uh, where is it? We'll try and map some of these objects to the ones in Kotlin on the Android side and kind of see how we get on. I might have to put the mic down a little bit as well, but. Um, some some of the stuff that typically is required for setup is like okay if you're developing on Android of course you're gonna need um, Android Studio. Um, I'll just quickly open Android Studio. Um, Android Studio is cool like it's a um, a monster IDE for lack of a better term. Um, I don't know. Oh, I've got to change the font size. Uh, t -t 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 uh, I have to make it sound small, don't I? Okay. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, okay, but before we jump into that, um, and then um, some other tools that are useful for local development is something called a uh, polar is is anyone familiar with polar or used polar what do you guys think of polar do you like it or it's pretty good yeah <laughs> yes well op open the issue maybe soon um so basically um yeah polar lets you like spin up i guess a local lightning network a local lightning environment where you can you know have a Bitcoin core running in reg test mode and um, open channels with with uh, lightning nodes of different implementations as well. Um, let's see if I can quickly. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll open Polar very quickly. I'm trying to do this all with one hand. Let's see. Nah. <laughs> That would look, I just feel like that would look weird on camera, but it's okay. Um, hold on a second. Well, the one the one thing about using um, Polar, it does have a it does have a dependency on Docker, and some people don't like that as an as another dependency. But like when you when you use Polar, you basically um, you can define like the it has the three implementations: LNDC, Lightning, Eclair, and obviously Bitcoin Core, and then I'll just call it uh, my network. Just uh, can't spell. Just give it a name. Create network. Uh, and can we make it smaller? Okay. Nice. <laughs> I could shout. I guess I could shout. I'll try and do a bit of both, but yeah, as you can, as you might be able to see, so we've got like yeah, Bitcoin Core is like the back end, and that's feeding these three Lightning nodes. One is LND, one is uh, Core Lightning, and one is Eclair. And uh, if you click into them, it gives you like all of the information about like how to. Oh, I need to actually start the network. Um, it gives. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So it gives you like all of the information around like the node's ID and its IP address and the port it's on and stuff like that. So you can either um, spin up another local node and just like interact with, interact with it that, that way. Um, one thing I'd definitely recommend as well is if, if you're new, you can use the LDK sample node, which is, let's go to GitHub quickly. Which which is here. I won't do it now because just in the interest of time, really, and I want to just leave some time for some chit chat and some questions. But you can go to 
GitHub and go to the LDK sample and basically run the sample node locally and start interfacing with the nodes that are running in Polar. I think that tends to be a good way to for you to get an, a feel for um, the capabilities and the features in LDK. Um, that's one good way to do it. Um, so Polar, yeah, thumbs up to, to Polar. Uh, of course, you can, we've got a lot of experience with Bitcoin in this. I, I, I guess you can also run Bitcoin Core locally, so you can compile it from source yourself or just download the binaries and run Bitcoin Core locally and um, connect your Lightning node to that. Um, me and Val did a stream this year, running through like the sample, running through the sample nodes. So if you're interested in that, like feel free to to watch the, the YouTube back. I won't I won't go through running the sam sample node here. Um, and if you want to actually get access to the Kotlin bindings for Android, um, they're located in our release section. So we're on 0.1.10.2 um, and you'll find the binary for the Kotlin um, bindings here under LDK release double AR. And then you can just include it in as a dependency in your project. And then lastly is like the sample, I guess the sample wallet that I'm currently building, it's called an uh, Umlando wallet, which uh, I picked randomly because I liked the song and uh, it's Zulu for history and it just felt cool. So whatever, that's what I called it. But it's basically just a, a, a sample app written in Kotlin. Um, so it, it will give you the, the boilerplate for getting started on, on Android as well. It's currently like still still being fleshed out. Like some of the stuff it's got, it's got an on-chain BDK wallet. You can connect to peers, list peers, get Node ID, and kind of halfway to opening a channel as well. So you can find that on my GitHub. Um, so let me think. We have got twenty minutes left. So I will try and uh, I'll try and show some code samples, and then I'll kind of map them back to like the architecture map that we were looking at earlier. Uh, I'll try and map it back map it back to this one and we'll see how it goes so uh, let's open android and uh, and let me close a lot of this stuff so i think the first one we'll do is we'll look at like what a channel what a channel manager looks like um I'm trying to do this with one hand and remember where everything is so basically like you have this um you have this uh, channel manager constructor, right? And it takes a whole host of of different properties and objects. Um, one is the, the network that you want to run on. So it supports reg test up to mainnet. Um, a user config object that is defines like all your handshake limits between you and your peers how much fees you're willing to, um, the fees you're willing to set for routing uh, payments. Um, you have to keep LDK and your channel managers up to date with the latest chain tip. So you've always got to feed it the latest block hash and the latest block height. Um, Anton alluded to it earlier, but we have this this keys interface as well, which you seed with your own entropy and provide a unique timestamp each time you restart your application. Um, a fee estimator, so for uh, managing on-chain fees as well. So you can you can I guess you can manage fees in 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 a host of different ways as well. You can there's different APIs you can do it. You can call call out directly to Bitcoin Core as well. We have something called a chain monitor, which is uh, the way I understand it is a list of um, channel monitors. So each channel has its own kind of like channel monitor, and the chain monitor is in charge of um, aggregating them together. We have yep. Mm. Mm. I I don't actually know. I kind of cheated because I I haven't even implemented this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me see. I I don't think I even implemented that. I just put in a random integer. But that might be a good um 
question for the audience. So as you can see, I'm um, just returning like some some hard coded value, but do people know? Did <laughs> did because I just wanted it. I just wanted to get it to work. Um, but I don't know. Do people know what people are using for fee estimation? Do you guys know to what? So. Okay. So. Okay. So. Okay, so there's a lot of um, Bitcoin core fee estimation being used. Um, do you guys see any other sort of being used? So Bitcoin core seems like a safe, safe option to use. Um, yeah, don't don't hard code values like I have because um, that's not the way to go. But for <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so you have this this channel manager constructor, and you, and you provide all of these things. Um, a transaction broadcaster as well, so you can like transact, you can broadcast your transactions in in any way you want. Um, we're doing some work such that BDK would would be the preferred option for you to broadcast your transactions, and then just some just a basic logger object object as well to um, uh, log gossip and and. Uh, debug errors and things of that nature. Um, so that is like one of the, the, the core um, objects that you need to use. But of course, like to the, the requirements to, f to fulfill it are, are quite a lot. Like where do you get latest block cache from? Where do you get latest block height from? This specific um, application is just making API calls to Blockstream and just getting everything from Blockstream basically, just for ease of use and just to, to um, showcase the the um the point um you can probably see it uh, uh, yeah they're just very basic it's just very basic api calls right to to blockstream nothing super exciting um and using them to broadcast transactions as well um but you can in a very near future do that with bdk as well um what else do we have that might be of interest? Um, and yeah, I think th this might be good just to very quickly like go through go through these. So like as you can see, you build up a channel manager with like all of these objects, and um, you just prov you just uh, have these interfaces that you have to implement. Some of these inter these interfaces have various fun various functions. So for example, your fee estimation. You again, we we just spoke about it, but you. You have to override a method called get estimated sats per one thousand weight, and you in in here is not is where you wouldn't return a static value, but you would call out to Bitcoin Core or some other API or maybe a combination for of of both, and you aggregate the fees or you get the average of the fees or the medium of the fees, and and that is your fee rate per, and set it to high, medium, and and low. Um, you have a log interface, which I didn't really print, want to print out because gossip is noisy and uh, it was messing up my terminal. So I've not implemented anything there, but you have a log interface. You can do whatever you want there as well. Um, you have a broadcaster interface, which you have to override a broadcast transaction method. Um, again, you can do whatever you want in here. I'm trying to play around with using BDK, um, but you can use Blockstream or whatever you want really. Um, I'll skip the graph stuff for a second. Okay, this one this one is interesting as well. Uh, and I'll stop in five minutes just for questions, but we have this persist trait. So again, th this maps back to, uh, where is it? It's here, right? This maps back to like this module. Um, so again, it's just, it's just provided as a, as a, I guess a trait in Rust, an interface in Kotlin in the Java world, and it exposes two methods. One is called persist new channel. One is called update persisted channel, um, and this gives you back a an out point, an ID for an out point. It gives you back a channel monitor and an updated monitor ID ID as well. And I've just done like some super basic stuff by just like writing all of that data to the local file system so nothing nothing super crazy n nothing super complex but you could um you could definitely customize that to your to your liking and then there's this updated persisted channel as well which does a similar thing 
And then, okay, one thing is important to touch on as well is this idea around uh, events. So, like I mentioned earlier, LDK does a lot of, um, uh, it, it emits events d during specific times in the life cycle. Um, so, don't judge me on, on how ugly this code looks, but uh, essentially you get back these um, these events. So one of them was the funding generation ready. And that's when you make a an, out, an outbound request to appear to open a channel. And what you'll get back is an output script that you need to use to build up a transaction and broadcast to the network. And you get all of this information around like your counterparty's node ID, the channel value in Satoshi's, um, the temporary channel ID. So all of this um, information that you can store for usage later. And then you get other events as well, such as like when your channel's closed, um, when there's a, and the reason for that. So your channel's closed, there might be, it might have been a cooperative close. You, you do something, you log something. Here I'm just, I'm just logging stuff to files just to, just to, for some basic record keeping. Um, other closure reasons include like disconnecting to peer. Um, and this isn't, LND didn't fix the bug. Fix the bug. Uh, Roy said that, not me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you have all these host of events that you can just do do stuff with, right? Um, so that's a little bit about event handling and uh, what, there's one more thing. Uh, I think I wanted to do something about keys, but let me see if I can find it very quickly. Uh, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to find it on the spot. I don't, oh no, wait, entropy, start. Uh, I want to just find the keys interface very quick. Okay, here. Okay, so here's an example of um, what the keys trait, keys interface looks like as well. So. It's just a very basic object that takes some entropy, which I've, again, just hard-coded. You pass it um, a start time, and uh, that's it. And you just, Or you just provide a unique time step each time. And that's pretty much all you have to do f for providing the seed for your lightning keys. But again, you could use the same entropy that you use for creating an on-chain wallet, for example. Um, but all in all, I don't know, this is about like, as it stands now, this op this has the ability to like open channels or just about open channels. And this is like, I don't know, 300, and 300 plus lines of code, which I don't know in today's development world if that's a lot or not, but it's, um, it's not a lot of code, but it's it's more about like how you um how you think about these objects and like how they interact with each other and like the different events that get fired off is more about is is I guess more where the complexity um comes in. Um and what else? I think I think that's about it. I I think anyone just yeah anyone interested in doing like Kotlin Android stuff, I just encourage them to like just clone the repo, just have a play around, have a look around. It is it is quite intuitive once you kind of dig in, and kind of um get your get your hands dirty. Just like development in is by its very nature, and um that's kind of all I had really because I, I wanted to leave a bit of time for some questions like my preferred method of doing this kind of thing is to actually workshop and try and get people set up and and we actually like do some coding together but like an hour is like one of it's like an awkward time slot where you can't really like set anything up and you can't really you kind of just have to cover stuff super high level so I hope some of it was like useful and yeah I opened the, the room to the questions now yeah Hundred percent, yeah. LDK, I guess, make assumptions on how some external components work. For example, you have to persist some channel data before LDK can send another event. Yeah. Now you send that. Exactly. So you LDK relies on the outside developer doing the right thing. Yeah. How do you plan on helping the developer do it? Because I guess you 
Nice. It's not so. I don't know if people are, like watching can hear and stuff, but um, there is still uh, the the comment was that there, there's still a lot of um complexity as as we've just seen with regards to how you glue everything together in LDK, and it's something the team have definitely identified. Like you still have to. I I I'm I'm unsure. Like do developers even know like the operations around um opening channels and the stuff around like on chain enforcement and all of this stuff is like a lot to get your head around right um so to kind of com combat that combat that or fix that we are building an uh, an abstract um, an even more abstract api which we're kind of calling like at the moment ldk light which will expose like a set of functions and methods to to do all of that for you almost like what um blue wallet did with uh rnldk like if you go to dairy policy yeah exactly so there's going to be uh well, yeah what, one second so there's going to be um a more high level api which maybe i don't know five six seven functions connect to a peer open channel send payment receive payment close channel like five five methods and we'll make some opinionated decisions about um what we deem our best practices in different environments i guess um we have a discussion on the github as well uh under so we're using I love this GitHub discussions. Uh, we have, so we have, yeah, we have an RFC actually. So people should feel free to comment if if they're interested in using LDK in a more simplified way. But we have this discussion open towards a simpler API for, for LDK. Um, so there is some like initial design stuff going on. Um, just some super high level abstractions, getting your nodes, sending payments generating funding addresses, basic channel info. So yeah, maybe, I don't know, six to eight functions that you don't have to worry about. You can get up and running very quickly. And that's definitely a direction we're heading, but still maybe provide enough escape hatches so that you can use the full API if you need to as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, lightning, so it's just a lot, it's a lot to take on. Anton, you, did you want to follow up? Yeah. Do you want to use the mic, mic or are you sure? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> So, so say that I didn't quite catch that. So the 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 LDK sample. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Any any other questions? Was that useful? Was that interesting? Or was that just shit? Like. <laughs> cool. Any any other questions? Yeah, I mean, like again, like the high level goal is like, it's it can take a team of three or four developers, or at least previously, maybe even now, to build a very basic Bitcoin and and Lightning wallet, like eighteen months to two years, and I, I guess where some of the other projects in the crypto ecosystem shine is that they they make it super easy to like onboard developers to to do stuff in web3 and it's like one line and you can just do all of this stuff right like i think there is a place or a happy medium that we can reach to get closer to that kind of experience um where 
you can build a Bitcoin wallet in a weekend. You can type in how to do stuff with Bitcoin on YouTube and thousands of like videos are popping up on how to do stuff because we have the tools that make it easier to do it. Like I think that is definitely a world that is um, an improvement in terms of getting developers into the space. Like, look, we don't have a, a developer marketing budget to <laughs> to get all of these developers to come and work on Bitcoin. Perhaps like other projects do, but I think if we if we uh, build the right tools that have enough substance to um, help people integrate Bitcoin and, and Lightning, then um, we're definitely on the right path. So, and now, any other questions? Is anyone thinking about using LDK here in this room? Yeah, is it just building out? Is like just, just building out a wallet from start, or you want to integrate into something, or? That sounds good. Um, how, how about how about um, well, how about your developers? How have they have they did they have like a lot of Bitcoin Lightning experience before help like building? They had already. Oh, okay. Just learn. Yeah. Yeah. It's just no way around it at the minute. Cool. Any other questions? I don't know. I'm the wrong person to ask about that stuff. I'll be honest. It seems like kind of interesting, but it also feels like I don't know. There's just so many. Um, I don't want. I don't know if I should say important, but there's just so many other like pressing priorities at the minute. Like our team specifically is, we want to get Bolt Twelve done. We want to get Taproot done. We want to get offline received done. We want to create a, a better experience across different languages. Uh, so it's not on our roadmap just <laughs> yet, but I, that's not to say it won't be or anything. But it's just a lot going on at the minute. So I don't know. It's it's it's, it's a it represents a bit of a, a distraction for us, I think. But on its on its face value, it seems like very cool technology and stuff. Um, but I guess it's just priorities, right? You know. I'll take take one more just because just. Because it's time. Unless I'm getting kicked out. I don't think I'm getting kicked out. <laughs> Anyone? One more question? No? Everyone just want me to get off the stage? Okay. Cool. All right. Nice one, guys. Thank you. <laughs>